told we needed some bare root stock and that's not how we typically do stuff in the West, right? So we uh, went to these places that had th these, uh, this um, agricultural extension office from LSU that sells those things or, or gives them away basically. And they said, oh, we just gave the rest of them out to this guy named Foster. But maybe you can call him. So we called him up and he goes, who the hell are you? Why do you want trees? And we said, oh, because we're doing this thing. And he goes, oh, okay, come down here. So we, John and I came down and that's from Ed Foster. You'll meet him later uh, today. But um, uh, then he said, and so that first time we just saw him, the next year we came down and did a, uh, a boil. You guys have a boil tonight? And he said, how come do you guys go out in the, in the water? And we go, well, no, we don't have a boat. He goes, well, why don't I take you on the boat? And so for uh, several years, he was very kind to take us out on the boat, just paid for the gas, and that was all it. But then uh, 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 challenges would emerge, such as the boat's not running like last year things of that nature, and issues like, oh, running out of gas in the middle and like, out there, and waiting around for some kind citizen to tour, tow us back and make fun of Foster, which was always very good. Um, so anyway, so then last year, when we were at Foster's place, we ran into this crazy dude, and he says, well, why don't you come with us? And I said, well, who the hell are you? And he said, well, we do these tours. And I said, well, yeah, but we're your university group. I give tours to university group all the time. So that's how we ended up here. And so we're at Empire, and I'll let uh, Richie take over from there. Sure thing. So thanks for coming, y'all. My name is Richie Blank. Uh, y'all spent some time at the Woodlands Conservancy uh, yesterday, right? Yep. Yeah, so I, I'm a former board member there. Um, so you know, I'm really familiar with that place. And uh, Anyway, but so I live down here in Empire, Louisiana, and what we're doing today is we're gonna make uh, sort of a, a circumnavigation of the lower Mississippi River Delta. And we're gonna leave from, well, let me start, by uh, maybe going back in time a little bit. Y'all flew into the airport over here, um, upstream, and you know we'll, we'll go back to uh, when this place was first settled. Um, you know, folks made their way down you know, after the last ice age, and what the river would do is it would just, it would build a sub-delta, and then you know, the, the river would just sort of bust out, you know, find its level, and build out another sub-delta. Uh, the river did that about 10 or 12 times since the last ice age. Folks lived down here on these earthen mounds. They built them one basket of mud and shell at a time. They pooled their labor to live in exceedingly productive places, but they only did it at certain times of year because it was really risky. Uh, high river, hurricanes, that kind of thing made it really hard to live. Fast forward to contact. Land was doled out here in these really thin strips that came off of the riverbank um, in these French and Spanish land grants. There were only two requirements. You had to build a road and you had to build a levee. And all that centered around like certainty of commerce. Um, you know, we, that's when things started sort of going south. Um, these levees that were put up that you're represented in pink here, what that did is it prevented the annual overtopping of the river every year that would help to replenish all these wetlands. There are also a whole bunch of natural distributaries that would sort of work their way through and kind of hang on to these kind of half abandoned uh, sub deltas out here. Fast forward even further through time to 1927, uh, the Great Flood of 1927. Something like a million people were made homeless over, uh, over a year's time, 600 people died. It was the worst catastrophe in the country's history at the time, and the American people told Congress, we can never let this happen again. And so the MRMT, the Mississippi River and Tributary Levy System, was, uh, was put into play. Um, it was a massive public works project which really sort of uh, set off the destruction of the Delta. Up until that time, the levees were this just sort of like ad hoc system that were thrown together by, you know, landowners and local municipalities to protect small areas. But this was a one main big system that had uh, central management. Did anyone realize at the time that it was gonna, how it was gonna affect that? Yeah, so there's actually a National Geographic article from 1897 talking about some of the levees and some of the management done to keep, get ships in and out of the river. Um, and, you know, it, I, this isn't a direct quote, but the gist of the, the article is that, you know, this is going to be great for the economy, but we're going to destroy the Delta, but don't worry, we can rebuild it several times over with all the economic gains. Um, that didn't happen. Um, anyway, so, anyway, so the, levy, the levees were built, these distributaries were cut off, which, you know, really accelerated land loss, and around the same time, oil was discovered in South Louisiana, and so we sliced and diced this place 
He sliced and diced his place with these pipeline canals, these energy transfer canals. There should be no straight lines in South Louisiana. And some of these canals, they, they just diverge one or two degrees. Pipelines could have easily been put in the same, multiple pipelines could have been put in the same canal, but it was just easy to dig a canal through this, you know, kind of soupy soil. And that really, really accelerated the land loss because salt water was able to rush into these interior wetlands, killing them off. Places where oil and gas was extracted, there was induced subsidence. So, so places like here, the West Point of Lahash oil field, you can see there's marsh all around it. But right here where they were actually extracting the oil and gas, it caused subsidence. That's why this area sunk out ahead of time. But the land has changed very, very quickly here to where, say in my lifetime, this area right here looked more like this. In my dad's lifetime, this area here looked more like this. You know, and so the way that's been manifesting itself is, you know, boats have started to change. You, know, you used to be able to drive around in a flat bottom boat here. Now you need a boat with a deep V and you'll still get wet on a choppy day. The marsh is eroded, so the Explain fish... Explain that. So you mean it's more like the open ocean than it was like a marsh? So, yeah, so, it, I mean, it was an area that looked like this with a lot of small ponds, bays, bayous, um, you, tidal creeks, that kind of thing. Um, and, I mean, these places had names, Bay Palm Door, Dry Cypress Bayou, Schofield Bay, Schofield Bayou, and now it's more like a sound. Um, it's just, you know, bare islands that are about nine miles from here with a, a couple little marsh islands just interspersed. Um, you know, all those wetlands help to lower storm surge when, a, you know, a tropical storm comes, so, you know, the community is more at risk. So, at, you know, between 2000 and 2010, with Katrina being in 2005, the population of Buras the next town down uh, decreased by two thirds. Um, you know, that manifests itself in, in weird ways. So we got a water system made for 10,000 people. Now there's 2,200 people living here. You know, it's hard to keep up municipal services. Um, and the thing is, this all happened by little decisions made to improve people's lives several generations ago and people sort of knew the effects but it was kind of look you know we just looked past that because you know we had development to do right then and there um, but anyway so what we're going to do today is we're going to leave empire this is uh, one of the bigger fishing harbors in the country by weight and we're going to head out towards the barrier island chain we're going to stop at a couple sites on the way out uh, we'll stop in front of the lemon tree site which is a first nation site show you how people originally occupied the Delta. They were gonna pass through Bayou Cook. There were 600 people living there around the turn of the last century. There's still boats in the harbor that were built out there. You can't even tell it ever existed when you drive past. And then we'll head down the freshly rebuilt Barrier Island chain and uh, head down towards uh, Venice. Venice is a, a mixed use harbor. Um, there's commercial, recreational fishing going on. It's a jumping on and off point for pilots navigating ships up and down the river. There's uh, energy development going on there. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into Red Pass and you'll see the vegetation change over. You'll see the insects, birds, that kind of thing change over as we work our way up to the harbor. We'll stop and eat lunch here. Um, we'll pass through a cypress forest before we leave the harbor and head up river. And then we're gonna pop out on the east side of the river where the river is connected to the sound uh, the river is extremely high right now, but there's land being built out. You're going to notice new willow trees between like two and ten years old that are starting to establish. So that sort of protective wetland buffer is starting to be reestablished here. That being said, uh, this side of the river that's in the process of being destroyed is the most economically viable. You'll see boats oystering. Uh, the shrimp season's closed right now, but uh, you know they'll be shrimping there. Whereas the other side of the river is just duck hunting and catfish. Um, things that aren't exactly on the seafood platter in New Orleans. So, but anyway, it's a, a pretty well-rounded trip. Every coastal subtype is represented. All the, the different marshes we have here, the Barrier Islands, Cypress Forest, the river itself. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about like the history, the economy of the area, um, and how it all kind of intersects together. So, anyway, we're gonna take three boats, um, five and two boats, and then uh, six in the other. And y'all can pair off however y'all like. Yeah, and so just